Hello friends and welcome to church. My name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson and I'm the lead pastor here at Jerome Church. And I'm so happy you've joined us for worship this day as we begin a new sermon series entitled Thrive. We'll be answering the question, how do we thrive as Christians? And we'll answer these questions by focusing on the letter in 1 John. So go ahead and get your Bibles out and download your Grow resources. You can find the link for those either in the description or by following the QR code on your screen. And now let us prepare our hearts for praise and worship. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? The shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. And wipe away the tears from broken dreams and wasted years. Till the past to disappear. Oh, let me tell you. Church. My name is Sarah Merriweather and I'm the Executive Director here at Jerome. As we prepare to hear today's message, I want to invite you to connect with us during this time of our online worship together. During worship today, I invite you to use the chat or the comment function on any platform that you're watching on to join in the conversation and share your thoughts or your prayer concerns with our staff and with our online worshiping congregation. I also invite you to connect to Church Center, which is our app and our online resource that virtually connects you to things like our Connect Card, signups for upcoming events, 
worship videos and resources, our kids and family resources, and our online giving platform so that you can support the ministries and missions of Jerome Church. You can scan the QR code on the screen to connect or visit us online at jeromechurch.org slash church dash center. Today we are beginning a new series called Thrive as we are looking at the letter of 1 John. So let's join together now and listen to today's message from Pastor Bruce. Would you pray with me, friends? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Before we uh, begin, I wanted to give a little background on 1 John. Let's begin with the authorship. Now, Christian tradition holds that either John, the gospel writer, or an anonymous author wrote 1 John. What we do know is because some of the language used, it is believed that someone with a connection with the early apostolic Christian communion, meaning uh, they had witnessed to some of Jesus' direct disciples, or they were amongst the outside of the 12 disciples, but still had seen Jesus, had written this. Now, the events described in these letters uh, that make up 1st through 3rd John uh, happens in a place known as Ephesus, somewhere between 64 and 66 CE, Common Era. And what's going on is we find out through the course of these three letters that there is a splinter group that has broken away from Christian community and is forming their own sect or just merely standing aside and challenging and making it difficult on the beliefs of their former community because they've fallen away, don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah anymore. Now, 1 John challenges followers of Jesus to stay true to what they already believe, and that's what we're going to focus on in this series, Thrive. But I thought I'd give some input about the second two letters. As 2 John is a warning to a specific house church that is going through this situation, and 3 John is written to a person named Gaius, one member of a particular house group. Now here's some themes that we need to look out for as we read this letter in 1 John. God is light and God is love. Righteousness by loving our neighbor and Jesus is truth. Now what I think is kind of going on is we are dealing with a Christian community that is trying to grow and thrive in their faith and lives while constantly being bombarded and challenged about their beliefs by a wider worldview. And this worldview is made up of those who have left the faith and no longer believe in the things, the Christian doctrines that we hold the foundation of our faith in. It may be made up of those who have never approached the faith at all and may have only heard rumors or, well, I heard you believe. And it's probably made up of those who may be in the faith but are struggling to believe some of the same things that may not be, um, may not be uh, the firm foundation we need to plant ourselves in, but, but could be theological differences. Now, some of these things may sound familiar. You know, I mean, church just went through a, uh, a split, if you will, over disagreeing issues. We're used to, as Christians, being questioned in our faith from all directions by a wide worldview. For those from other faith, those who have no faith, God, declare themselves atheist or agnostic, those within our own Christian fold, those within and without our own denomination. It's a tough life to lead. It's hard to figure out how to thrive as a Christian. Yet I think we'll discover by looking through 1 John over the next few weeks that the Bible, the Word of God, the application of our faith is as important today as it was during the time of the writing of this letter. So let us begin. What does it mean to thrive? 
Now, I'm sure many of us, when we think to thrive, we think about growth. Others of us may think of growth as just getting by. So firstly, I just want to say thriving does not mean merely surviving or just getting by. I think of this often this time of year as I begin to focus on what I'm going to plant in my garden and how I'm going to take care of my lawn. Now, if I'm honest, last year my garden produced some vegetables, but it did not meet the goal. It did not ex you know, exceed my expectations. Uh, it did not thrive. It actually barely got by. In some cases, some of the plants barely survived. So my goal this year is to have my plants not just survive and get by, but to grow well, to grow vigorously. Like, quite frankly, the dandelions that I find in my yard, they seem to grow very well, vigorously, to some personal goal that they have, no matter how much I try to take them out. I wish I could have that same thing with my garden. I want the same growth, no matter the amount of rain, no matter the amount of heat, I want my plants to overflow with vegetables. I want them to thrive. And I want the same thing in my life. And I want the same thing in your life. You see, as Christians, we are called to thrive. Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8, talks about this idea of thriving. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. It, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. To me, this is what thriving looks like. It's growing and producing fruit, not just when the conditions are perfect, but being rooted in such a way that regardless of the situation, we are able to grow well, to grow vigorously, and to progress towards and reach a goal. Like the tree that Jeremiah describes. No fear when the heat comes, leaves are always green, no fear of drought, and never fails to bear fruit. So how do we thrive as Christians in our life situations when things aren't perfect, when the scenarios seem to have us pushed down? Well, what we're going to look at this week is that Christians thrive when we fellowship with God and other believers. Hear these words from 1 John, chapter 1, verse 1, through chapters 2, verse 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father, and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you that we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light and as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oftentimes in Christian community, we talk about fellowship. It turns into one of those churchy words that we tend to use a lot. And typically we mean things like getting together and hanging out for game nights or church picnics or the next Sunday potluck. And that's part of it. However, it's much deeper in the idea that is being spoken about in this letter from 1 John. You see, fellowship in the Greek is koinonia. It means oneness and common communion. That places a deeper meaning to that idea of fellowship. You see, for Christians, fellowship, koinonia, has a multi-layered goal. It's positive relationships with people and one another. It's also a positive relationship with God the Father and Jesus the Son. It's also the participation in a common interest or goal. First John talks about this idea of fellowship. In First John 1, 1 through 4, the author begins this letter by proclaiming their witness, what they had seen and heard and touched and believed of the salvation found in Jesus, Jesus who is the word of life and the proclamation of the eternal life. Jesus came to return us into Quanania with oneness, uh, fellowship, communion with God, back to a right relationship with God as it was in the garden, as it was meant to be at the time of our creation before the fall of humanity. This is the the witness that they are proclaiming. And they say that in this witness, their joy is complete. And their joy is complete because they are sharing this salvation with us through their witness. Now, in 1 John 1, 5 through 10, the writer begins to explain what being in this fellowship or maintaining this fellowship with God and other disciples, what it looks like. Uh, In a way, they are telling us the ideals and expectations to be in this fellowship. Now, remember, the ideal is the perfect situation. The expectations are what we're doing to try to achieve the ideal. They begin by saying that God is light and there is no darkness in God. And what they're saying is don't claim this fellowship, don't claim this Christian relationship with God, and then go and continue to live sinful lives. Don't claim it at all if you're going to knowingly go and continue and intend to live a sinful life and then say, but I'm a Christian. You either are or you aren't in the eyes of the author. I was reading an article recently and found a new term that was actually a little disturbing. It was a term known as crino. Crino stands for Christians in name only. The author of that article says it's people who say they are Christians, but do not believe Jesus the Christ is the way to salvation. They don't believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And therefore, they live lives that don't reflect the light of Christ. They say they are Christians, but probably go upon their lives continuing to sin if they are sinners. And Quite frankly, we all fall short of the glory of God. Now, the author continues to go on and say, but if we walk in the light as he, God, is in the light, if we do these things, we won't sin, but we will uphold the precepts of God. We will uphold the rules and the commandments of God. We will be able to maintain the true fellowship with one another, us with God, 
and God with us through those precepts, and ultimately we will be cleansed by the blood of Jesus the Son. Now, if we claim to be without sin, we are lying to ourselves and to God. So the writer knows we are going to try our best, but we will fall short. We will reach for the ideals. We will have expectations, but we may fall short. But if we fall short, if we acknowledge that we have sin, we simply need to confess our sins. For when we confess, Jesus will forgive us and make us pure. And finally, 1 John chapter 2, 1 and 2. He says, don't sin. Now, that's the ideal. Lead a life striving not to sin. I believe we can reach that point of Christian perfection through Christ, not through our own work. We too often lean on ourselves, but through leaning onto Christ, I believe we have the ability to meet that ideal. Don't sin. But the expectation is do the best you can to lead sinless life, striving for that expectation. Don't sin, but if you do, there is good news. Jesus will speak for us. Jesus will act as an advocate because he has died for our sins. He's paid the price of our brokenness and sin and overcome the penalty of that sin, which is death, which points to eternal life that was promised. Friends, the first step to thriving, growing well, achieving the goal as a Christian is to be in fellowship with one another through our shared salvation in Jesus and to be with fellowship with God and to, to see to the precepts and the commandments of God. We need to maintain this relationship by not sinning, by following the precepts, the rules set before us. The commandments summed up in two. Loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving our neighbor. Friends, let us continue to join together in fellowship with one another, with God the Father, with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let us continue to be guided by the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who points to Christ, who advocates for us, for our brokenness. Let us thrive together in the world we live in today, loving God and loving neighbor. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. It is good to be with you again in worship today. Today we're beginning a new series called Thrive, looking at the ways that we can thrive as a Christian gaining insight from the letter of 1 John. As we continue in worship together today, I want to invite you again to connect to all of the resources in Church Center, which is our online hub for engaging with the ministries of Jerome. While you're there, please be sure to check into worship or complete your Connect card today and take some time to explore all of the opportunities in the app, including some upcoming events and ways that you can volunteer in a local mission, or can grow deeper in your faith by participating in an upcoming class or study. A few of the ways that you can take a next step with God here at Jerome Church include signing up to attend our next Discover Jerome class that will be held on Sunday, May 5th at 11.30 a.m. 
This is for anyone new to the congregation or for anyone interested in taking the next step of membership here at Jerome. We also have a number of upcoming events, including a kids and students retreat coming up this Friday evening. Our Jerome Fest Craft and Vendor Fair coming up on April 27th and our Vacation Bible School and Safety Week for kids ages preschool through fifth grade, which will be held June 3rd to 5th. You can learn more about all of the upcoming opportunities as well as view the entire calendar and connect to signups through the Church Center app or by visiting our website at jeromechurch.org. The people of Jerome Church are committed to the mission that Jesus gave us to love God and love people. And you can join us in this work by giving your regular financial offering today. You can give electronically through the links in today's video description on the Jerome Church website, or you can donate online through the Give tab in the Church Center app. Or if you're giving for the first time today, you can text the word GIVE to 614-587-7871. You can also give through automatic withdrawal by contacting the church office or by mailing a check to Jerome Church at the address on the screen below. I encourage you to set up recurring giving through any of these methods so that you can consistently support and join in the great work that God is doing through the people of Jerome Church. As we end our time of worship together today, I want to say thank you for making this worship time a part of your week, whether you're joining us live on Sunday morning or watching later on demand. I want to invite you to connect with us online this week through our social media platforms, as well as in the Church Center app. And know that we are looking forward to worshiping with you this next Sunday as we continue to learn how to thrive as Christians together. Have a blessed week, friends. Tell you about my dream.